A very warm welcome dear students. I am Ritu Joshi, your geography teacher, again with another lesson of geography. Hope you have learned from your last lesson and you have completed, must have completed your questions to the given in the video. So let's proceed with the next chapter. So student had to come to the another class of geography. Today we will start going to start our next chapter. So here we come to our next chapter, which is chapter number two, the Earth's major landforms. So here in this chapter, you're going to learn about the major landforms of Earth. So first of all, we get to know that what are the landforms. Whichever things we have seen in the Earth, like the mountains, the plateaus, the plains, whatever the natural structures are there in this Earth, that is called the landform. So in this chapter, we are going to learn about the major landforms of the Earth. So let's proceed. What will be the learning from this chapter today? We are going to learn about the crust, sea level, landforms, endogenous processes, exogenous processes, mountains, range, valley, four mountains, block mountains and volcanic mountains. So these all are the studies of today's class. So we are here we are with the first very first topic which is crust. We all know our earth is spherical in shape and the different layers of the earth is there. Okay, if we talk about the earth, the earth has a solid surface made up of rocks and soil. Okay, if you touch the surface that you can find the rocks and soil are there in the earth. Okay, you go any of the agriculture field or any of the field, you can find the soil and the rocks. Okay, so that is the earth surface is made up of rock and soil. It is called the crust. Okay, and whichever things is visible from our eyes of the earth, that is called the crust. It is the outermost layer of the earth. Okay, as you see the diagram in the screen or the picture in the screen, and the picture of the earth is given, okay, and it's showing the different layers of the earth. Outermost layer is crust, which we are talking about. You have seen that rocks and soil is there in the earth's surface. That is the crust. After the crust, another layer is there inside, which is mental. Then outer core and the inner core is there. Okay, so we can compare the earth with a with a egg like you can uh, outer outer shell of the egg is there then inside the white part and the yellow part is there uh, the yolk part is there the same as there in the earth also it is called the crust out of the total area of the surface about 71 percent is covered by water and the remaining 29 percent is above the surface from the land masses okay if we talk about the crust it has 71% part is covered with the water. Okay, that means in our earth, in our earth crust, most of the part is the watery part. We have many oceans, many sea, rivers, lakes, ponds. So 71% part of the earth is earth crust is covered with the water, and remaining 29% part of the surface is the land masses. The land is there, okay, where the continentals are there. So, on the basis of this, the earth is divided into two parts. The one is oceanic crust and other is continental crust. Okay, oceanic crust, the crust which is below the ocean or below the sea. That is called the, that is ocean and the sea is also the floor is there, which is called the oceanic floor. Okay, or the oceanic crust. And other is the continental crust on which we have seen in a continents like continent Asia, North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Australia. So that is called the continental crust. So we have to come now 
after the crust, we have seen the outer surface of this earth is the crust. Next is the sea level. Next term is related with the sea level. What is the sea level? As you seen in the picture is there. The water blue part is the water is there. Then the green is the mountain are showing. So the vast area of water surrounding the land masses are interconnected. Okay. If you see all the ocean, vast area of the ocean, all the water, all the ocean, all the sea, they all are interconnected. Okay. Just today do one thing. Just take a world map. And if you look at the world map, then you can find whichever the oceans are there, whether it is a Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Arctic Ocean, Indian Ocean, okay, Mediterranean Sea, Arabian Sea, okay, Indian Ocean, all these are interconnected some of other way, okay. So the level of water remains same everywhere. This level of water is called sea level because all the ocean, all the sea, they are interconnected to each other. So every year the level of the water is similar. Okay. And this level of water is called the sea level. Okay. If somebody asks you what is the definition of sea level, then you can say that uh, all the water bodies of the earth, they are interconnected to each other. So the water remains same everywhere and that is known as sea level. The height or the depth of any point on the earth's surface is measured with the reference of this level. Okay, so lowest level of the earth is called the sea level. If we talk about the height of and depth of any of the place, we always give in the reference of sea level. So that's why it's very important we get to know what is sea level. Okay, so if we talk about highest point of the earth, which is Mount Everest, which is the highest peak of Himalaya. Okay, and it is about the height of 8,848 meter above the sea level. As I told you, if we talk about the height and the depth of any of the place, we talk about with the reference of sea level. So if we talk about the height of Mount Everest, then we are saying the height of Mount Everest is 8,848 meter above the sea level. And if we talk about the deepest point of the earth, which is in Pacific Ocean, that is called Marina Trench. It is in the depth of 11,034 meter below the sea level. Okay, because it is inside the ocean. So we give in with the reference of sea level that is below the sea level. Okay, so hope you understand what is sea level. Okay, now we have to come to the actual topic which is landforms. Okay, so now we have to come what is landform. A landform is a natural features of the earth's surface. Some parts are elevated, some parts are rugged and other are flat. The earth's surface has different type of landform. They are divided into three major types of landform. Okay, as I told you, whatever the natural features we can see in our earth, that is called the landform. Okay, it may be a sand dunes are there, it may be a desert is there, it may be a mountains, it may be a hills, it may be a, a plain area is there. So all these are called the landform because we humans have not created it, it is naturally created. Okay, so some landforms are elevated, like we can take the example of hills and mountain, some are parts are rough and other are flat. Okay, some are the slopey rugged areas there, some are the flat areas there. Okay, so major type of landforms are divided into three major categories. The one is mountains, other is plateaus and the third one is plain. Now we have to come to the formation of landform. Okay, before going further about the different types of landform, we should have to know how these landforms are created in the earth surface. So forces inside and outside of the earth can change the shape of the earth surface. Two processes that are responsible in the change of the formation of landforms. These are endogenous processes and exogenous processes. Okay, so the forces inside and outside of the earth can change the shape of the earth surface. Whatever the forces are there in, inside the earth's surface, as I told you, earth have the different layer inside the surface, mental, inner core, outer core is there. And it has also outside, we have seen the crust is there. 
the various changes are there in the shape of the earth surface the two processes are responsible for their creating the landform the one process is endogenous process and other is exogenous processes okay endogenous force forces and the exogenic forces can create a lot of landforms a landform is a natural features of the solid surface of the earth okay so if we talk about endogenic force forces and exogenic forces they create lots of landform okay so whatever the landform we can see in our earth these are created with these two processes also okay and these landform is a natural feature of the solid surface that means the solid surface which is crust these are the natural features of the crust so we have to come to the first process which is called the endogenous process endogenous processes are processes that happen beneath the earth such as faulting folding and volcanic activities endogenous processes are the processes which are happened inside the surface that means inside the surface are inside the mental inner core and the outer core okay so whatever the processes are there happen inside the surface that create the landform these are called the endogenous processes and such are faulting folding and volcanic activity whenever the fault is there that means whenever the cracks is there whenever folding is there and whenever the volcanic activities are happen <coughs> endogenous processes cause many major landform features they are creating many features are there have you seen in the screen how they get happen uh, you can see the fault are there folding is there also and the volcanic activities so you have you seen in the picture these are these are the normal fault transform for fault reverse fault and the transform fault again this is the folding is there when the earth outer crust is get fold okay then this is the volcanic activity okay here you can see the volcanic eruption is there here the ashes are coming out from the volcano next process is there which create the landform which is exogenous process like we have seen endogenous process which is happen beneath the surface means inside the earth exogenous process which are happen above that means on the crust part on the outer surface so exogenous processes are those that happen on the surface of the earth that means on the crust so these are the main exogenous processes are weathering erosion deposition okay weathering erosion and deposition in depth uh, you will learn about these more uh, that's exogenous processes in your later classes so these are exogenous processes on the earth it wasn't you all have to know wherever the outer part of the um, outer covering of the soil is washed up because of the rain water because of the flood that is called the soil erosion okay and if it is collected somewhere else from like we uh, deposition the very good example is sand dune sands are sand is very light whenever the winds blow in the desert area the sand dunes get shifted from one place to another because it blow along with the uh, uh, winds okay and deposited somewhere else which is the example of deposition okay weathering when a big rock is break up and convert it into a smaller rock that is called the weathering in depth all the study you can learn you will do in your later classes so here you can see in the picture weathering erosion deposition okay we have seen the one land form is there the wind rain okay uh, the freezing all these are the moving broken material the first is uh, the material is get weathered okay it is get weathered like uh, uh, rocks get weathered because of the wind rain freezing break up rocks okay once it get uh, weathered it become loose it become loose material okay then can easily erode from there move from there erosion means to move away from there and then it get deposited in one place which is called the deposition
okay so exogenous processes are created the landform by weathering erosion and deposition now we have to come i told you already that we have three major landforms are there so here in this class we talk about the first major landform which is mountains so we have to come to the mountains a mountain is a conical mass of land rising to much greater heights than the surrounding areas nearly 27% of the world land surface is covered by mountains okay what is mountains mountain is a conical mass of the land which is rises much greater heights than the surrounding area okay that's why it's called the mountains and 27% part of the land surface of the world is Uh, the mountains are covered the 27% part of the land surface and you can see the three uh, big mountains are there the himalayas of asia i mean basically it's in india nepal and the other one is the andes okay it is in south america uh, himalaya is the largest mountain ranges of the world and then after followed by the andes and the ural okay ural is the mountain those are in russia okay now if we learn about the mountain then we have to learn about the few terms those are related with the mountain these terms are range hills and valley so first we have to talk about range what is range mountains generally occurs in chain or line called range okay if you see the mountains they are not a single mountain is there they are uh, in a chain or a line okay so when you draw something some landscape you are drawing the mountains also in that landscape you always saw multiple mountains why you are showing because you always seen the mountains in a line or a chain okay so when we talk about the line or a chain of mountain these are called the mountain range now we come to the hills a small mountains is called hills okay the mountains which have a small less height is there which is called the hills like we have a hills are there hills hill stations like shimla manali denital okay darjeeling all these are the hills because they have less height in comparison of the mountain ranges like nanda devi kanchenjunga okay so they have a less height is there that's why they are called the hills now we come to valley the lowland between the hills or mountains are called the valley okay have you seen the picture here so the land in between the hills or a mountain which is a lowland area it is called the valley okay after the after knowing the terms related with the mountain we have to come to the types of mountains okay so the first type of mountain is fold mountains okay so what are the fold mountains fold mountains are the mountains uh, among fold mountains formed when a part of the earth surface is pushed up to form a wrinkle called fold two terms are related with fold mountains anticline and syncline okay so the fold mountains are always created with the endogenous activity okay whenever the surface of the earth is pushed up it can be pushed up by the earthquake it can be pushed up with some other activities okay when of the surface is pushed up okay so it forms a wrinkle called a fold okay it create a wrinkle like you can see in the pictures it creates the wrinkle wrinkles which are called the fold so that's why the terms related with the fold mountain whichever the highest mountains are there in the world like himalayas andes alps all these are the fold mountains because they all are created with the inside activity of the earth the earth get wrinkled and it get fold and these mountains are created okay so with the fold mountains two terms are related one is anticline the parts of the wrinkle that are curved upward are called anticline okay have you seen the anticline written over there in that uh, diagram okay so raised part is called anticline okay jab bounds banta hai that is called the anticline syncline the part that are curved downward are called syncline and the part which is downward 
is called the syncline. And like we talk about the mountain, uh, I told you two terms. Okay, the one is uh, uh, about that uh, valley. Okay, which is the depressed part is there. Okay, so when we talk about the range, okay, these ranges are anticline part. Okay, and the valley is the syncline part. Okay. Wherever a fold mountain is constructed, it is constructed basically in the ranges and the range are, the chain are there is a anticline and the depressed part is the valley which is a syncline. The fold mountain is also divided into two categories, young fold mountains and the old fold mountains. So we have to talk about first the young fold mountain. These mountain ranges were formed during the most recent mountain building period. They are also known as young fold mountains. They are high and rough with a pointed peak. Okay. So if we talk about the young fold mountain, they are constructed in a recent era. Okay. Uh, they are not too old. That's why are still their construction processes going on. They are still taking the height. If we talk about the Himalaya, Himalaya is a young fold mountain because every time Himalaya is taking height. Okay. They are very high and they are rugged also. Okay. They have a very steep slopes are there and they have pointed peaks. Example of young fold mountains. The Himalayas in Asia, the Alps in Europe, Rockies in North America, Andes in South America, and the most prominent fold mountains of the world. Alps, Himalaya, Rockies, and Andes. Now, next category of fold mountain is old fold mountains. They are formed and shaped over millions of years ago. They are usually lower and less rough than younger mountains than their peaks are rounded. Okay, old fold mountains, they are also constructed with the activity of folding, faulting. Okay, but when they constructed, they were very high, but later on their construction gets stopped and the agent of erosion, like the winds, running water, all get work over them and they eroded the material from these mountains and their height get reduced. Okay, so that's why they come in the category of old fold mountains because they were not constructed in a recent era. Okay, so how they are different from younger mountains? They are, their peaks are rounded. They are less in height. Okay, they are less rugged. So these are the old fold mountains. If we talk about the examples of old fold mountain, Glaciers of USA, Urals of Russia, Aravali of India, and the Atlas Mountains are the example of old four mountains. You can see the difference in the height. You can see the picture of this old four mountains and the previous part we have seen the picture of the year four mountains. You can see yourself that the difference in the height of there of these two mountains. The next category of mountain building is block mountains. Now, how the block mountains can build up? Block mountains are also formed by the internal endogenic earth movements, which cause the force of tension and faulting. Okay, we have seen young fold mountains are also created with the endogenic activity of the earth. Block mountains are also created with the endogenic earth movement. That means the movement which has happened inside the surface. Okay, which cause the force of tension and faulting. The downlifting and uplifting of the land in between two parallel faults result the formation of block mountains. Okay, here is little bit difference between the fold mountains and the block mountain. Okay, what happened in the block mountain? The wrinkle has created, so the part is folded. One part is folded, which is anticline, and other is sink. That is syncline. Here is the force of tension create the fold. Fold me crack. Okay. So downlifting and uplifting of the land between the two parallel faults, if the two faults are there, that is create the block mountain. I'll show you the diagram later on. You can see after that how the block mountains has created. Now next, a block mountain is also called a horse and the rift valley form as a result of faulting called gradient. 
okay there are two things related with the fold mountain the horse as i told you the one part is uplift and other part is depressed in block mountain so the uplift part create the block mountain which is known as horse and the depressed part is create the rift valley which is called greenland okay so whenever the block mountain is constructed only one landform is not created it created two landforms which is the one is block mountain other is a rift valley okay block mountain are called the horse and the rift valley are called the greenland if we talk about the example of block mountain and the rift valley the vosges of the and the black forest mountains of europe and the rhine valley between them is the rift valley so here see you can see the diagram how the block mountain has created here you can see the raised part which is horst and the depressed part which is greenland okay and these lines you have seen these are the normal fault okay so the part which is raised it is created a block mountain and the depressed part is created the greenland like we have seen in fold mountains also uh, the wrinkled part is called is created the young fold uh, sorry fold mountains and the depressed part or the sink line part is created the valley valley between them so here you can see the cracks are there which is called the fold in the later diagram okay these two cracks are created in the block and what happened after the crack whichever the crack part is there it get depressed okay so after depression the side two side part is get raised so the raised part is created the block mountains and the depressed part as the greenland is created the rift valley you will have to create this diagram in your copy also we have to come to the third category of mountains which is volcanic mountains you all must have heard about the volcano okay so volcanic mountains are formed when the molten rocks deep within the earth erupts and pile upon the surface okay we know the earth has a, a three different parts are there mantle inner core outer core and earth have a extreme temperature inside the surface that is some of more than 6000 degrees celsius so whatever is there inside the surface it is not in a solid state it is in a molten state okay so whenever the cracks is there in the surface whatever the molten material is there it is oozed out from the surface these are the molten rocks or it's called the magma also okay when it erupts it's pile up on the earth surface jab wo bahar nikalta hai to surface mein jama hote jata hai pile up hote jata hai okay so magma is called lava when it breaks through the earth crust when the ash and lava flow there are the two terms related with the volcanic mountain what is magma other is lava when the molten rock is inside the surface these are called magma when they oozed out from the surface and coming uh, uh, oozed out from uh, to the surface uh, the that magma is known as lava okay so it break through the earth crust when the ash and the lava cools it build a cone of rock okay when the ashes and the molten rocks get cooled down it builds a cone of rock okay so the rock and the lava pile up layer on top of the layer okay one after another the layer and the ashes gets piled up and they created a cone shape a mountain over there some of the example of the these mountains mount st helens in uh, uh, in north america mount pentobo in philippines mount kia and mount lao in hawaii okay here you can see the picture here the mount uh, volcanic eruption is there okay and after eruption this mount has to be created here because uh, volcanic eruption is happen and then get stopped and then after some certain year again get stopped Uh, again get erupted and the material get piled up over there and it raise the height of that volcanic mountain so let's recap what we have learned today we learn about the crust we learn about sea level these two terms are related with the landforms we learn about the landforms we learn about the processes those are creating the landform these are endogenous processes exogenous processes we learn about the mountains 
the terms related with the mountains range valley we learn about the fold mountains types of different mountains like fold mountains block mountains and volcanic mountains okay so uh, rest of the part we will learn the other land form of the earth surface like uh, the plateaus plains and one more part of the uh, this mountain is left which is importance of mountain that we will learn in our next class and i am giving you some question you will have to uh, do these question after watching this video uh, the first question name three major types of land landform we already discussed in this uh, video what are the three major types of landform these are mountains plains and plateaus then what are mountains i discussed about the what are the mountains you can do from there how old how fold mountains are formed formation of fold mountains we already discussed uh, define exogenous processes define horse cable define syncline define anticline name any three young and old fold mountains when i have, uh, i already discussed about the different old and young fold mountains of the world Then the last one we'll have to do differentiate between young and old fold mountains. You will have to write the difference between these two. Like uh, old fold mountains are less in height, young fold mountains are very high. Old fold mountains are less rugged, young fold mountains are rugged mountains. They have <coughs> conical. Young fold mountains have conical layer peaks. Uh, old fold mountains have rounded peak. Likewise, many. Or uh, differences are there in the young fold and the old fold mountains. So, students, you must have learned about the land form from this chapter. I know this chapter it seems to be a little bit difficult for you because it has a physical geography, but you should have to carefully. Uh, see the content of this chapter and try to understand them then you will easily get learn this chapter so happy learning to you thank you